everyone. My name is Marissa. I'm a herpetology keeper here at the Houston Zoo. And today we're over at our Galapagos Islands exhibit and we're going to be hanging out with Galapagos tortoises this morning. And we wanted to show you guys with all the heat, uh, Texas heat that we've been having, we want to show how we keep our tortoises nice and cool and what they do during the summer on a typical day. So right now uh, they're getting a couple of treats. They're getting lettuce. Um, we're also going to show you guys uh, how they eat zucchini as well. And I think we're going to answer some questions at some point. But before then, we're going to show you guys how, uh, how our tortoises like to stay cool. Uh, we'll give them a little shower. And uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy that. So these guys, uh, we have a herd of 10 tortoises currently. And we have three really large ones. And then the rest, they range in size um, from small and medium. Uh, these guys, though, here's Jervis. This is Jervis, the, our biggest uh, tortoise right now. He's our confer only confirmed male. Um, right now, he's about 300 pounds, and he will be five or 600 pounds before he's done growing. So this is a very, very young herd. Um, they all come from all different zoos around the United States. So with Galapagos Islands, these guys are not actually from the islands. They're uh, captive bred and raised in the United States uh, through breeding different breeding programs and that's uh, through our And so, and so uh, <laughs> they're really enjoying the lettuce right now. Yeah, so these guys, they don't come from the actual islands themselves. Uh, it is not uh, lawful or legal to bring animals from the islands anymore. Um, so these guys are all born and raised through breeding programs in the United States. Um, and so they are raised in the United States. Um, they're ever seen uh, pigs rolling in mud, what they're typically doing is they're trying to cool off when they're too hot. So these guys do the same thing. Uh, their shells almost act as like insulation, and so when they want to cool off, they'll go, go for a swim. They can actually swim. Um, or they will bury themselves in the mud. And on very really hot summer days like this, you can, you can walk up to them. And it's like, you know, 95 degrees outside. And if you put your hands on their shell, they actually feel cool to the touch. And so we try to give them whatever opportunities we can to let them cool off. And when we start spraying them and giving them a little shower, that's also really good at redshirt for them. They really enjoy it. So as soon as some of these guys are finished with their lettuce, our other zookeeper, Mel, she's going to help us out and she's going to give them a little shower. And you guys can see the response that they have to that. How much lettuce can I eat in a day? How much lettuce can I eat in a day? Oh man, that's like if you give a mouse a cookie. <laughs> um, so these guys, they get about take about 50 pounds of produce three times a week um, and that consists of three different types of lettuce so they'll get romaine green leaf and red leaf um, they'll also get cactus pads zucchini uh, sweet potato squashes um, but lettuce specifically they <laughs> they really like having it um, I think they would probably just eat and eat and eat if you would let them um, so these guys are actually grazers uh, so they kind of pick around throughout the day. They do get fed all of their produce three times a week. Uh, but throughout the week, they also get uh, pellets. They're uh, especially made for animals 
that are like a grazing species. So sometimes you'll see pellets, they kind of look like kibble that's spread out for them. And then they also have hay. Uh, so they'll have hay feeders and they'll get hay with their produce buffet on those three days. Uh, but yeah, if, if you just left the lettuce out for them, they'd probably eat as much as they could for as long as they could. Right now, we're going to start giving them a little shower here. And so like I said, this really helps them cool off during the summer. And cooling them down like this uh, will help them stay cool throughout the day because like we talked about, their shells kind of act as insulation. Jervis, our big male, he was just getting sprayed a little bit. Hopefully we'll get to see one of them do what we call a uh, finch response. So these guys have a mutualistic relationship with uh, Galapagos finches in the wild. There we go. So that one that's standing up really, really tall, stretching out, closing his eyes. That's what we call a finch response. And so, like I said, the the uh, mutualistic relationship that they have with the birds in the wild at Galapagos Islands. Um, they've developed over time uh, as a response to stretch out and they actually let uh, the birds hit like parasites and bugs off of them. Um, through all the little soft parts in their neck and armpits and legs and things like that. Um, so both parties benefit the birds, they get something to eat, and the tortoises, they get all of the bugs picked off of them so they can be, live a healthier life, and they won't have to deal with any type of like disease, bug bites, things like that. Um, and it's also super cute. Uh, we love, <laughs> we love seeing them do the fence responses, I think everyone does. They stand still like a statue. They kind of go into this like trance-like state, um, and you can sit there and like, scratch on them and move on them. And a lot of people ask, uh, can they feel? Can they feel us scratching and brushing on them and things like that? And they actually can. So <laughs> turtles and tortoises, their bone structure is actually, and their ner nervous system as well is actually built into. The underside of their shell. So turtles can't uh, slide in and out of their shell like you know like hermit crabs can. All of their nervous system and bone structures are attached on the underside of their shell and so when we scratch them and stuff it's almost like if you put pressure or scratch on your fingernails it's similar to like what they can feel. Um, their shells are also made of keratin, so it's the same thing that our nails are made out of. Um, a lot of people ask too, they can see the rings sometimes on the tortoise shells. So people ask, is it, is it, you know, is it like trees? Can you tell how many years old they are by that? And you can't. Um, their different rings are just growth stages in their life. what type of care and husbandry they've had in the past by looking at their shells. Yeah, but he's going so, to show. what you want to see, everybody's got really healthy growth. Um, you don't want to see like super kinky, like pyramided shells, um, because that is usually an indication of improper husbandry. Um, you want to see really uniform growth, um, and you don't want to see any like malformations in the shell. Oh my goodness. This is Daphne, and she is loving her shower. So yeah, when these guys do the finch response, the birds that we were talking about, they're gonna be trying to get bugs and parasites up from all of these under, uh, soft underparts. <laughs> it's almost like they fall asleep. And this over here, this is Junior. She is our oldest lady. And she's still pretty young. She's 32. And so she's our oldest. And so that's still really young for these guys. Um, they can live to be over 100. 
uh, I think the record is like 170 ish years old. And so. Can you just speak up a little bit? I forgot the mic piece. Just. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah just speak um, up a little bit more. So, yeah, this is Junior. And if you guys are just joining us, today we are hanging out with our Galapagos tortoise herd over our Galapagos Islands exhibit. And so these guys were, uh, gave them a little fresh snack of some lettuce, some nice cold lettuce. And then we're also giving them a spray shower now because their shell's really cool. joining us today. Um, if you would like to learn more about how you can save tortoises, like our Galapagos tortoises in the wild, a great way to do that is by reducing your plastic use. Um, you know, reusable water bottles, bags, things like that. Um, and you also want to be really careful about not littering in waterways. Uh, if you guys are not the outdoorsy types or anything like that, um, you can also help save animals in the wild just by coming to the Houston Zoo. Um, your purchase of the admissions ticket helps save animals in the wild like these guys. Um, and we love seeing you guys here. They do as well. So thank you so much guys for tuning in and we hope to see you soon.